Chief Olson, did you visit Flinders Aluminum Company before the night of the fire? Yes. And in what capacity? Uh, as, a, as a fire inspector, I, I made uh, annual visits to uh, all the uh, uh, businesses in the area, and this is one of the uh, stops I had. About how many times did you visit the Flinders Company? Uh, probably five, eh, ten times. And what was the purpose of your visit? Uh, I, for just to make sure the codes, fire codes, are adhered to. Uh, just to make sure that uh, you know it's a it's a safety check essentially. And what did you notice at the Flinders plant? Uh, it's very nicely done. Yeah, it's uh, very safe. You know, considering that it is a factory, and factories can be hazardous. This one here was neat and tidy and clean. And uh, I saw no obvious uh, signs, uh, any kind of indication that it was going to be uh, a hazardous uh, site. Did you find any faulty wiring? I did not. Did you issue any sort of report or validation that there were no fire safety issues? Yeah, I did. Sustain, please rephrase, Council. In connection with your visit to the Flinders company, did you issue any reports? Objection. Legal. Oliver ruled that when you can answer. Yeah, I did. And what was the substance of those reports? It's just, uh, it's a validation that uh, I had, I had uh, uh, inspected the plant and that uh, everything was in good condition. I, I never wrote a, uh, any sort of citation, a safety uh, or hazard citation. So the, the fire took place November 16, 2006. When did you visit the site after the fire? Oh, the next morning, a few hours later. And what was the purpose of your visit? I'm a fire investigator. Uh, I wanted to go back in the daylight and look at it uh, um, and uh, figure out how the fire started and what caused it. And when you were there the next morning, what did you notice? Well, you know, it, it took a long, a long time to investigate this fire, but I will say that, um, you know, obviously the, the most glaring thing was the fact that there was a, a dead body there. Um, uh, you know, uh, it had been crushed and burnt. Uh, I noticed that uh, the building had almost completely been engulfed and was destroyed. Let's start with the dead body. Did you see the dead body? Yeah. And what did you observe about the the dead body that was there? Well, it it, it was somebody that I knew. I had I had uh, suspected in the past in other arsons. I knew I was aware of this person. I had talked to him. Um, and um, who was this person? I uh, you know his name was George Avery. Um, he's a he was an employee at the plant. And how did you know him? Uh, again, from, from previous contact at uh, two other fires. Um, I had uh, come in contact with him, and <clears throat> subsequent to those, uh, invest to those fires, I had actually interviewed him. When you say prior fires, could you give us a little bit of background as to what you mean? Yeah, you know, uh, a few months earlier, uh, there had been a fire um, at another factory there in town, and uh, he again was an employee of that of that company, um, and uh, I suspected him strongly of being the arsonist. Uh, and uh, prior to that, what was uh, the basis of that suspicion, sir? Um, it was. Uh, I have to refer to my report here. So, when referring to your report, I'll refresh your recollection. Yeah, it sure would. Your Honor, may I approach? Yes, you may. Okay, I'm showing you what's been marked as Exhibit 3 which is your report of supplemental investigations. 
do you see uh, what is that? The fourth paragraph. You mentioned that George Avery had been connected to two prior fires at the Yap Hank and Fast Companies. Yes. And was Mr. Avery an employee at those? Yeah, Mr. Those facilities? He was. Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Avery uh, at the Fast Factory was a uh, paid consultant. Um, and uh, the Yap Hank uh, fire, uh, he was uh, an employee, a designer. And what was this? What aroused your suspicion as to Mr. Avery and those fires? Um, well, for starters, uh, to be a person in, that, that worked in three different buildings that within a, a relatively short period of time that got on fire is very unusual. And Mr. Uh, Avery was the only one that's connected to all three of these fires. And they're all in a very small area. Just, just a few blocks, um, which is incredibly, you know, mathematically, that's it's in, in, incredible. Um, he also um, uh, had uh, access to, uh, you know, some flammables uh, such as hydrochloric acid, you know, you know things that, that could have uh, easily started the fire. Okay, returning back to the building itself, the day after the fire. You saw the building. Could you describe for the jury the state of the building? Yeah, uh, the building was a, a really old uh, uh, affair. It was built in the early oh. 1800s. After the fire, what did you see of the building? Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, after the fire, it was uh, almost completely destroyed. There's one section, one corner that uh, that was still standing, but by and large, the roof had collapsed. It's a four-story building, and it had burnt literally to the ground. It was almost nothing was standing. What was left standing? Uh, there was a corner of the uh, of the of the um, uh, building uh, that was still standing, uh, but uh, uh, in terrible repair. Which part of the building was still left standing? I'll have to look at that also, if you don't mind. Not at all. Okay, the, yeah, the northwest wall of the building was left standing. It's on reinforced brick. Uh, that's the only thing that was left. So returning to your investigation, when you saw the dead body, you saw the building pretty much burned to the ground, how did you go about investigating the fire further? Well, uh, you know, it's, it's really important to look at the victim. Uh, you find out if he has any burn marks on him, whether he was actually involved in the fire and uh, you know, whether he was alive during the fire or whether he was dead in the fire, he might be a murder victim, for all I know. Uh, and, and these are things you have to check out. So you want to you want to really look at your victim. Now, the coroner's going to take that body away and do their own autopsy and their own investigation. But um, one minute. Once he's once he's removed, then you start. Then you look at uh, the the what you have in front of you, and then you also review videotapes. Um, of, you know news feeds and uh, security cameras talk to witnesses and you try to figure out how the fire actually spread and that gives you a clue as to maybe where the fire started and um, once you sink your teeth into the actual fire scene itself physically you'll find out uh, a lot you start to dig down through the uh, rubble and the ashes and you find out things say on the uh, on the concrete floor you may find, uh, in this case, we found spalling, which is uh, the destruction of uh, the surface of the cement. Uh, and, and where did you find the spalling? Right, right in the hydrochloric acid room, uh, the storage room. Uh, and where was that in the building? Uh, that would have been on the uh, south uh, east corner of the building. Would it refresh your recollection if I showed you a floor plan of the building? I'd love it. Thank you. Your Honor, may I approach? You may approach. Chief Olson, I'm showing you what has been marked Exhibit 7. It's a floor plan of the first floor of the Flinders Aluminum Company plant. Do you recognize what's depicted in this exhibit? I do. And what is it? Yeah, it's, a, it's the first floor uh, plan 
of uh, it's a it's a diagram of the uh, first floor of the Slender's Point. That's right. And would you say this is a fair and accurate depiction? I do of yeah. that first floor. I would. Mm -hmm. And where was the spalling in relation to the first floor of this building? Well, the spalling, see, in the in, in the uh, southeast corner of this plant is the hydrochloric acid storage room. And right in front of the uh, of the shelves where the hydrochloric acid was, there's, there was some spalling. Okay. And just to clarify things for the record and for all of us, including the jury, is it the southeast or was it the southwest corner of the building? Uh, I'm going to call this the southeast corner. Okay. Unless uh, unless I'm missing something. Our, uh, if you could help me get sure. oriented with this map, Chief. Sure. Uh, would the top of the page be the north? Um, yeah, if, if, if we're calling that north, uh, that's fine. Um, well, then I'll, I'll retract that and say it's the southwest corner. If north is, yeah, north is, is up, which is the way I typically draw, then it would be the southwest corner. Okay, but based on it, you, so you saw the structure, and based on what you saw, was the hydrochloric storage room in fact on the southwest part of the building? It is southwest. Okay, and I'm looking at this exhibit, and I see right next to it. Uh, what do you see right next to it, sir? It's a machine shop. Okay, right, let's stop you there, Ricky. Um, by the way. We